Facebook Live, Facebook Live, we have arrived. One more time, y'all. So let's get it in. Conference muted. <clears throat> Conference recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman Derek Yahoo to Israel. Also, let's pass to Derek on this evening of Bible study. Uh. January 22, 2024. Are y'all with me? I'm trying to see what, I'm, what am I wearing. It's fine. <sighs> back at it like a fanatic. We back with the Bible study, y'all. Um... Baptism Part 9. Hallelujah. So let's, uh, let's get it in. Um, let me think. Barbara, Barbara, good to see you in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We're back at it, y'all. Bible study of baptism part nine. Um... Al Mal, good to see you in here, sir. Um, thank you for a second, y'all. Mm. Okay. Um, Matthews 3, beginning at the first verse, 3 and 1, look what it says. In those days, Yachanan the Immerser, or who they called John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of Yahuwah, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camels here and leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O ye generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. Um, <clears throat> this is the setup for for the baptism that was preordained in the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. When it talked about the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for Elohim, making his path straight. Well, 
we understand from a biblical perspective that that's talking about the coming of John the Baptist, who they, they called him John the Baptist. And him preaching repentance and baptizing folk in the river, right? In the river Jordan, you got water at play, which is a baptism, which then led to another baptism, Melina, which was a baptism of the Most High Spirit and the baptism of fire. So, if you look at it scripturally, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for Yahuwah, it was through the preaching of repentance and baptism, to be more accurate, baptisms, plural. So in the sixth verse, you had people coming from all around and were baptized of John the Baptist, confessing their sins. Because again, the first move for salvation is to admit you're a sinner and coming clean. I don't, I don't want. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be like this. So that's what they were doing. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, "O you generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, because they wasn't coming to the baptism, confessing their sins. They they weren't in the mode of coming clean and changing." That, that wasn't why they came to his baptism. And so in the eighth verse, John, you know, let them know what the problem was. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meet for repentance. And, and, and bring forth, therefore, fruits, meet for repentance. Fruits is actions. And the action that one is supposed to come with are the actions that's equivalent to turning away from sin. That was the expected fruit because that's what true salvation is. Don't believe in this religious hype. True salvation is one turning away from sin. <clears throat> so the ninth verse teaches us and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that Yah is able of these stones to raise up children on Abraham. Um, <laughs> not again to get too deep into who they were, they were, they were, um, the seed of Esau. Not Jacob. Esau. And one of the reasons why he called them a generation of vipers because they were the snake people. Phallus worshippers. Which is a whole nother Bible study. But let's get into the meat of what we're here to talk about. Let's break open the tip first. And now also the axe is laid onto the root of the trees. Patricia Johnson. Here we go. And now the axe is laid onto the root of the trees. I don't know how y'all personally feel, but I definitely feel the axe at the root of my tree. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It, it feels like, it seems like all the marbles is on the table now. Way beyond trying to get away with having a form of yaliness, denying the power thereof, Melissa Green. Matthew 3 and 10. And now also the axe, listen, and also the axe is laid onto the roots of the trees. And the, and the axe is the word. 
Yeah, the axe, the axe is the word, y'all. And we all, we all, we all being judged, Mother Katie. Yeah, judgment is here, Latricia Johnson. Real talk. Alina, Barbara. And now also the axe is laid onto the roots of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings not forth good fruit is going to be cut down. And cast into the fire. That that's the finals right there. Logan. That's what it is. Be not deceived. Every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is, is gonna be cut down and cast into the fire. <clears throat> now John is breaking it down some more. I indeed baptize you with water onto repentance because we can see that's what he was doing to fulfill the scripture in Isaiah 40, the voice of one, you know, crying in the wilderness, making a straight path for us back to the most high, lovely wife of mine. That's what he was doing. Right? And now the axe is laid at the tree. Because we we've been a we've been a we've been find out what's really going on with everybody. Yeah, even those that, that come to him. We kind of already know what's up with those who refuse to come to him. But those that come to him, the axe is laid at the root of your tree as well. And every tree which brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast through the fire. So now, prelims is your willingness to admit you a sinner. That's why they was coming, uh, you know, all, all, all from all around Jerusalem and Judea to be baptized in the River Jordan. What were they doing? Confessing their sins. And that qualifies you for the first baptism. The qualifications for the first baptism is to verbally admit you're a sinner. And you want and you want to repent. Teresa, that's that's the first move. So we can see the fulfillment, you know, of that happening. But that's the beginning of the acts being laid at the root of your tree. Yeah, that, that, that ain't the end. You just started when you come to him. Confess with your mouth and believe in thine heart. That, 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 that qualified you for the water. So when you look at the 11th verse and it says, I indeed baptize you with water, you know, on to repentance. But he that coming after me is mightier than I. That's a whole nother level. Yeah. The axe is laid at the root of the tree. We finna figure some stuff out. We finna see what's really going on in a minute. We heard what you said verbally. And we saw you go down in the water. But. The 11th verse says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that coming after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Ruach HaKadosh, what they call the Holy Spirit. That's a whole nother baptism, y'all. And with fire. <clears throat> First Peter four twelve. Let's look at it. Look what it says. Like. Oh. 
Beloved, think it not strange. Concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. That's the fire we're talking about. Don't think it's strange. He just told you, I baptize you in water based on your verbal confession. You confess with your mouth and you said you believe it in your heart. So that qualified you for the baptism in water. Um, solidifying? Ah. Based on your verbal confession. That's better. Based on your verbal confession that I'm finna turn from sin and follow the most high. You're qualified. Water baptism. But there's another baptism. You're going to be baptized with his spirit, the spirit of his word. The spirit of the most high that moving forward is going to lead and guide you in all truth. And that baptism is associated with fire. Fiery trials. Peter called it. In first Peter four and twelve, fiery trials. This fire is trials. Manifold temptations. Situations. And this is saying don't think it's strange either. He told him. Putting in his proper perspective, he let him know, I baptize you with water onto repentance, but there's one mightier than I that's coming after me, uh, 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 Rosie. There's one mightier than me that's coming after me, and he going to baptize you with the spirit of the most high and with fire. So this is saying, beloved, don't think it's strange. This is the baptism that was promised. Y'all with me? This is, this is the baptism that was promised. For killer, see, we, we thought it was just a water baptism. Me confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart. Now I'm saved. That's, that's what you taught in church. Come to find out, that's the beginning. Because the water baptism, you qualify for it confessing verbally. What qualified you for the first baptism was verbal. Now prayerfully, according to Romans 10 and 9, you confess with your mouth and believed in your heart. A lot of people got that verbal piece down. But you want your heart involved. You need your heart involved. You can say whatever you want to say. It's going to be proven whether or not your heart is involved. And what proves that is the fiery trial. Yeah, the fire baptism. The fiery baptism. The baptism of fire. Are y'all with me? Put a one in here if y'all with me. I'm going to keep teaching. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Yeah, see what you're talking about. The, the fiery trials is going to prove what you talking about? If you another one that drew now to him with your mouth and honored him with your lips, but your heart is far from him. He had to complain about that. The fiery trials is the reproving process. Are y'all with me? Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, 
which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Ain't nothing strange. He told you that I came baptizing you in water. But there's one that come after me who's mightier than I. And he going to baptize you with the Ruach HaKadosh, with the spirit of the most high and with fire. Why are you thinking it's strange? Why are you thinking it's strange? People don't like you. People stabbing you in the back. Why do you think that's strange? We pass it from, from death to life. That's a heck of a journey. We got to be reproved. You think folks going to slide into heaven off running their mouth? Verbal? No, the heart of man, Jeremiah 17, 9, say the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That is beyond cure. Who can know it? You just ain't going to talk your way into this thing. You talk your way into the first baptism. That's fair. You said it all in front of the church folk, didn't you? In front of the church people, you said what you said. Which qualified you to take them to the wall. There. Did they say it? Take them to the wall. There. Take them to the wall. There. To be baptized. You got that. Off of being verbal. We ain't mad at you. But don't think it's strange. Concerning. The other baptism. Are y'all with me? The other baptism that he told you about is going to be. With his spirit, the most high is going to baptize you with his spirit. The spirit of the word is going to overshadow you and fill you. Yeah. And then the fire comes. Yeah, the reproving fire. Blood, thinking that strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. As though some strange things happen on you. Ain't nothing strange happened because he said he not going to have us ignorant concerning Satan and his devices. You study the scriptures, you're going to find out, yeah, that's a part of the program. Ain't nothing strange jumping off. This is, this, this was, this was prophesied. This this is a part, this is a part of the script. This is it right here. Uh-huh. This is it. So the 13th verse then says, But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of the Messiah's suffering. That's the fire, that's the fiery baptism. The Bible teaches that. Even the Messiah learned obedience through the things he suffered. Him suffering in the flesh, he was learning what obedience was all about. He was used to obeying Yah. Heck, he was Yah. But being found fashioned as a man, he saw it from a human perspective. And the world was made flesh. The flesh had to find out what it was to submit to the word and obey it. And the flesh, the son, learned about obedience through the things he suffered. He had already planned to obey him, but he learned what it was all about through suffering. Y'all with me? Put a two in here if you understood what I just said. He had already planned to obey Yah. But he ain't never been in the Garden of Gethsemane yet. 
sweating like blood. blood uh, uh, the, uh, a sweat was pouring off of him like blood dripping. He never experienced that before. So he learned obedience through the things he suffered. Oh, this is what it's about. Woo, it's hot. This fire is hot. 13th verse. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of the Messiah's suffering. Yeah. That when his glory shall, ain't no if, buts, ands, or maybe, shall. That when his glory shall be revealed, his majesty, his power, his supremacy is revealed. When it shall be revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. See, may is different than shall. Shall is for sure. May is iffy. It's up to you. Based on what you do. Based on how you respond to the fire. Don't burn up. Are y'all with me? Stay with me. I'm going to keep teaching. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 again. Because this is important. Kind of coming towards the end of this baptism Bible study. We might get one more in tomorrow. But I believe we will. But we'll see what y'all say. 1 Corinthians 3, and 10. According to the grace of Yah, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Give you a little more insight on that. What, what it's saying is he laid the foundation. Paul, he preached the Basora to them, what they call the gospel. He preached the gospel to them and those that received it now has Yahushua, Hamashiach, in a life. He took credit for that, for these individuals. According to the grace of Yah, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have, see, I have laid the foundation. I'm the one that preached the Messiah to you. Another build thereon. If we go up in the scripture, you'll find out they was talking about Paul and Apollos. One plant, that was Paul. And another water, that was Apollos. Apollos is teaching them more about the Most High. But Paul is the one that started it. He laid the foundation. That will let you know you got to be careful after you receive the most high via the Messiah in your life. You got to be careful on who you allow to pour into you, Don Dean, who, who is teaching you on top of that. Listen to what I'm trying to say. Did y'all understand that? Can y'all see that in the scripture? In the 10th verse, according to the grace if you can see that, I'll put a one in here again. According to the grace of Yah, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, like a chief apostle type of a guy, I have laid the foundation and another, like Apollos or someone else that's teaching as well, build thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Y'all with that? 11 verse then says, For other foundation, listen, For other foundation can 
no man lay, then that is laid, which is the Messiah. So, so the foundation that Paul taught them, preached to them, uh, Domina was the Mashiach. So when we get to the 12th verse, it teaches us this. Now, if any male build upon this foundation, you got the Messiah in your life, y'all. You have him. Okay, Evangela. Now, if any man built upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hair, stubble, those are substances. Works. Actions, things we do. Right? Now, if any male built upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hair, stubble, and I explained it to y'all again, gold only gets purer. Silver only gets purer. And precious stones only gets pure when burned by the fire. It's not going to disintegrate. Impurities is coming off of it. Then you got three more. Wood, hay, and stubble. Three more. However, these three will have a different effect when the fire hit. I got a fireplace, y'all. I'll tell you what happens to the wood if you want me to. When the fire hit it, it disintegrates. It turns to ashes. Are y'all with me? You know what hay do. And stubble is like sawdust. It's a wrap, y'all. It's going, it's going to evaporate. Now remember, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trials. It's just to try you. And don't start feeling sorry for yourself as though some strange things happened on you. He already let you know what's happening. You should know what's happening. I'm talking about it get hot. This ain't no game. It get hard on all of us. Anybody say, you going through something. And it get difficult too. You write about it, uh, Starly. Snap, crack, on pop. <laughs> Listen. When you look at the fire hitting gold, silver, and precious stones, it's going to prove that you belong to the Most High. You know what you're going to continue to do? Excuse me. Evolve, get better. It's going to be hard sometimes, too. See, when the fire hit, though you're gold, there's different levels of gold. There's different carrots. And when fire hits you, it makes you better. When fire hits the silver, it makes you better. When the press, when the press stone get burnt, it makes you better. It, the, the stone is going to be more precious. The silver is going to be more pure, and the gold is going to be more pure. Real talk. When fire hit, and you find yourself lusting, you find yourself angry. Wanting to be violent, want wanna 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 quit. And right now, angry about the things you're trying to accomplish, even for the most high. You're trying to do something for him and it ain't working. Are you with me? It's not working. You're trying to do something for the most high and it's not working. You got your little ministry thing. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it goes bad. 
Right. Because the fire hit me. And what the fire going to do is purify it. More so you than the ministry. If you want me to be honest with you. Sometimes it will yield forth, you know, some 100, some 60, some 40 fold, you know. What you're doing for the most high. Which is cool. And it's probably predicated on how you deal with it. How you deal with the things that hit. When the fire comes and you respond appropriately, it might just flourish. Tell you the truth. Some 100, some 60, some 40, you know. It'll give increase when the fire hit. But if what you're doing is wood, hay, and stubble, it burnt up. Because when the fire hit, to tell you the truth, the things about us that's not pure comes to the surface. And then we're commanded by the word to mortify the deeds of the flesh. And mortify means to kill. So now we see the things we need to kill out of our life. If you're impatient, if you're unloving, if you're unforgiving, fickle, you, you like to take sabbaticals, you like to quit pamper your flesh, feel sorry for yourself, come up missing for a month or two, then come back like you never left. You know, life be lifing. It be going down. And uh, if you're not careful, it'll run you off. Yeah. And say, say what you doing for the most high didn't prosper. In fact, it, it burnt up, right? It burnt up because you quit, right? You quit. You gave up. I ain't giving no more rides because people don't get no gas money and I, folks be getting in my car stinking. Most high was using you to get souls to the house of prayer, to the to the ecclesia, to the assembly. But but since they was rude or stunk, or didn't give you no gas money, now you you gonna quit? Yeah, your your work burnt out. If it's if it's if it's gold, silver, precious stone. Whether they gave you gas money or not, you still keep doing it. Because the Most High got you on a mission to try to help them grow in the Most High. And it's not predicated on gas. And, and what makes it hard is when your money is funny. But you're so dedicated to the Most High, you're still going to do it. You're still going to continue to do what y'all called you to do because you're not doing it for money. You don't have an ulterior motive. Fire will disclose to you if you have an ulterior motive or not. Are you with me? Stay with me. So, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial. Don't think it's strange because this is just a baptism in fire. Don't think it's strange concerning the fire trial. It's letting you know the fire trials is to try you. Yeah, you was baptized in the water to stop sinning. But through this life, you can start sinning again. The fire, the fiery trials will show you what you're talking about. <clears throat> Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which will try you as those some strange things happen on you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of the Messiah's suffering. That when his glory shall, ain't no doubt about it, be revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. So the 12th verse, back to uh, 1 Corinthians 3, excuse me, y'all, 3 and 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare. And the day is a moment 
in a day is going to be proven whether what you're doing for the most high is really for him or not. He tell you to do something and get hard. Some people quit. Use it as an excuse. I ain't, I'm, I ain't, you know, I ain't doing it. It burnt up. And the day declared it. 13th verse. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by what, y'all? Fire. You with me, Domina? Fire. Fire, fire going to tell, tell you what it is. I heard what you said verbally, how much you love the most high, how you ain't going to never leave, how you ain't going to... I hear all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see. 13th verse. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it. Yeah, the day, the day gonna declare. The day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. John baptized in water based on what we said. You with me, Watson? Based on, we confessed our sins. Said we turned it from them too. Snitching on ourselves. Admitted we were sinners. That's what we did. But he told you there's some somebody coming after me who's greater than I. Whole nother baptism. Whole nother baptism. You can baptize with the word of the creator of heaven and earth. You can get baptized with the spirit of the creator of all. Help us, Yahuwah. You're going to be baptized with the spirit of all. And then it's going to come with fire. Because the fire is more like it has folds in it. And, you know, the fire, you know, comes to purify us. Transform us by the renewing of our mind. Yeah, it has a purif it has a purifying quality. It has a transformation quality in it. If we if we if we respond to the fire right, when the fire hits you and say it starts revealing to you the impurities in you and it, and it starts to manifest. You can see it in yourself. You can see the lust in you. You can see the you know the grudge trying to form or I'm tired of this. I quit. You can see it. And if you if you if you go silver precious stone, when you see it, you're gonna take the word and kill it. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yah. You're gonna cut you're gonna cut the impurities out of you so that you can be pure gold, silver precious stone. Am I making any sense? So the fire has a purifying quality. And it also has a revealing to you who you are and what you are quality as well. The, the fire will show you, you know, something more than, you know, purifying you. It'll also show you if you, if you ain't cool. Right now, we're dealing with what you do. You're a pastor. It's going to be tried. It's going to be times you're going to want to quit. People are not going to appreciate you. People are going to come against you and all that old fun stuff. You got to be ready for that. See if you have any arterial motive. When people don't support you, say if you full-time ministry and you're really supposed to live over the altar and people don't treat you like that, they don't give like that. You know, they more like tip you like you're a stripper. You know what I mean? They're not going to really take care of you like they should. That's a test for, for, for a full-time pastor. 
Big test. What's he going to do? Quit? Then you, you're going to suffer loss. Yeah, yeah, you're going to suffer That's what it said. Yeah. That's what it said. Watch. 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it. We talking about works now. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. We're talking about works now. We're not talking about us. We're really not dealing with, per se, our sinful nature. We're dealing with what's built upon the foundation. We already got the Messiah. Right? You're right, Big Sean. Strippers do get more. Back to the lesson at hand. But every man shall work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall reveal by fire and the fire of the fire shall try every man's work. What you doing for the most high? Yeah, every man's work of what sort it is, it's going to reveal that if you are giving people rides for service or if you are feeding the poor, if you are uh, housing the homeless, the fire is going to reveal why you're doing it. If you're doing it for Yah or you really got an ulterior motive, the fire comes and, and shows all that. So the 14th verse say, if any man's work abide, which he built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Paul, in this instance, laid the foundation, and it was the Messiah. If another preacher or teacher come along, you dip, build it upon, but we also build upon it as well. doesn't matter who the person is building upon it. He planted another water. Right? But it's Yah to get an increase. He'll get an increase when you go through the fire. To be purified, or it's gonna burn up. What you do is gonna burn up, and you ain't receiving nothing. Let not let not that man think he shall receive anything from you. You receive nothing because you wasn't doing it, you know, for the right reason. You're doing the right thing for the wrong reason. You can do the right thing for the wrong reason. Oh boy, you be witnessing your butt off. You only doing that because she's cute. He's handsome to you. You ain't doing it to, 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 for their soul to be saved. You doing it because you want to save their soul. <laughs> you want them. And, and, and fire, will, will, fire, fire will hit that situation and prove where you was coming from. When you find out they don't want you, then you stop witnessing to them. You, 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 your work burnt up. So the 14th verse says, If any man's work abide, he shall, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward because you did it, really did it for Yah. If any man's work shall be burned, listen, he shall suffer loss. If, if your work burn up, he ain't giving you nothing for the work. That's it. Yeah, you shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. You're still going to be saved, you know, even though, you know, you, you suffer loss. Yet so as by fire. You didn't escape the fire. Because you yourself still got to go through the baptism. You went through the first baptism, what? You made it to the water. What you tell the preacher? What you tell the believer to witness to you? That you was down with the most high and you believe? What you do? Confess with your mouth and say you believe in your heart? Did you? Did that did that get you in the water? Y'all been baptized? That got you to the water, didn't it? But the guy that was baptizing folks in the water said, there's one greater than me whose shoes I'm not even worthy to unbuckle. <clears throat> he got a whole nother baptism for you. 
He going to baptize you with the word of the most high. You going to receive the mind of the most high. Yeah, he going he going he going to deliver his 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 ways to you through his word. That's what he going to he, he going to baptize you in it too. Cuz cuz it's supposed to consume and take over your life. Let this mind be in you that was also in the Messiah. He's going to baptize you with it. And then it's going to come with the purification sauce. Gasoline. Kerosene. Yeah. Things that's going to burn the stuff that ain't cool about you off you. It's going through a purification process. Including what you do. And if what you do ain't really for the most high, it's going to burn up. But you still got to be saved. By fire. First Peter 4 and 12. Bluff, think it not strange. Oh, you just want to cease fire sometime, don't you? But you kind of welcome the fire if you know what's happening. Like, um, those of us that want to be presented blameless before his, before his presence, kind of like bring on the fire, man. Because I don't want to be like this. I want to change. Bring, bring the fire. I want to prove to you that I do love you. And I am your son. I am your daughter. The believer really, I'm telling you, the believer, the true believer gets exhausted with this wicked place and all the dilemmas and all the lies and all the, it's just so much going on. So much going on that you just say, you know what? Save me. And when you say that to the most high, you really mean it. Like, rescue me from me. Period. You with me, Demeter? Listen. Save me. Rescue me from me. Help me. I'm not acting right. I'm not loving right. I'm not talking right. I'm not walking right. I'm not being right. Help me. And then here come the fire. Do what you got to do to present me blameless before your presence. Put a three in here if you feel that way. Put a three in here if you feel that way. Conference line, I know y'all talking with me. Put a three in here if you feel that way. Talk back to me. Put a three in here if you feel that way. Help me, y'all. Put a three in here if you feel that way. Hallelujah. Talk back to me. I see the threes coming in. Yeah. Put a three in here. Save me. Save, rescue me from me. I need you. I know I do. Yeah, I need him. He's not done with me, y'all. He's not done with y'all either. You got to be down with the five. The fire we try, which is to try you and think it not strange. You know, start the, oh, like, 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 like special stuff happened to you. We all going through it. Put a one in here if you ain't going through it. That was fast. Put a one in here if you ain't going through it. Everything hulky dog. You ain't been tested or tried. Put a one in here. I don't see no ones coming in here. Thanks for your honesty. We all going through it. Put a two in here if we all going through it. Put a two in here. Put a two in here if you going through it as well. Put a two in here. It gets rough. You tell you think it not strange. Don't think it's strange now. Concerning the fiery trials. They're just here to try you. 
as though some strange things happen on you. Ain't nothing strange happen on you. It ain't happen to somebody else. We all going through it. We all done cried about this thing. We all done grit our teeth. <laughs> we all done had sleepless nights. We all done cried, help, Father, help me, help me, help me, help me. Oh, uh, Teresa, I feel you. I uh, see that emotion too, boy. Boy, can I relate? I'm finna get out of here, though, y'all. Listen. <sighs> Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. You start feeling sorrow for yourself <laughs> if you think it's strange. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try to test, prove you as though some strange things happen on to you. But rejoice the opposite, y'all. But rejoice in, in that we're partakers of the Messiah's suffering. That's what we're doing. That when his glory shall. Oh, and it shall be revealed. You may be glad with exceeding joy. Hallelujah. How many of y'all would that? Put a phone in here. Put a phone in here. Help y'all. Put a phone in here. Yeah, put a phone in here. Need it. Put a phone in here. Hallelujah, uh, C. Starley Evangel. Yeah. Five on it. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's pray. We need prayer. Hallelujah. We need prayer. Hallelujah. Spirit living Elohim, we love you and thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence, gleaning in the word in this Bible study. Baptism part nine, continue to reveal truth to your children that we may continue to go through the transformation process. We're only able to go through the transformation process because of your unmerited favor, what they call grace. Hallelujah. Continue to supply us with your unearnable favor. And, and we're depending on you to present us blames before your presence. We're not going to think it's strange concerning the baptism. You already told us. Via John, John told us too. You said there's one that's mightier than I to come after me. He gonna baptize you with the Ruach HaKadosh, with the Spirit of Yah, and with fire. Here we are. Burn, baby, burn. Do what you gotta do. And save us. Write our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. Guard it. Until we see your face in peace. It will be kept to give you the praise and the honor. Not only now, but forever. In the master's name, Yahushua, we humbly pray. Hallelujah. And Amen. That was a lesson for the day. I pray we all continue to obey everything as I say. Okay? All right. Any questions? 302 Extension 815648. Thank you, everybody. Push the share button. Sharing your platform for the truth of the word. Thank you, everybody. The tag. That's the new way to witness. And thank you, everybody. The finance supports the ministry. You should sow where you grow. Is that all right? 302-202-1102. Extension 815648. Continue to pray for uh, Sister Yolanda Adams. And uh, a Tyree um, Reed that's tapped the map. 
big shot in his body, his mom and her body, and Leroy Lungs, and that the most high continue to draw him closer, special prayer for my nephew, uh, Terrell Millhouse, my, my son Nielsen, they're going through some things, and my other nephew, uh, Major, he gonna need prayer, and the most high continue to be merciful to him, uh, him as well, continue to pray, uh, for one another's uh, family, continue to pray that the Most High lead and guide us in all truth and protect even not only ourselves, but our loved ones and our children. Is that all right? Logan will pray. Pray for Charmaine as well. But continue to pray. Uh, special prayer for Logan, Donna, and all of them. Is that all right? Special prayer for Melissa. Keep Melissa green lifted. In your prayers tonight. 302-202-1102. Extension 81564. Y'all be Baruch. And uh, uh, Brock of Shalom. Irva Tov. I'm gone.